Hi guys, it's Judy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 ways to help prevent pests in your houseplants. When it comes to houseplants, there is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And unfortunately, the reality of owning houseplants is that sometimes we get pests on them. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. As we start to collect houseplants and we get more and more into it, it is inevitable, sooner or later, you're gonna get some type of pests in your houseplants. It's inevitable. It's all part of the process. It's all part of the journey. It's part of the collection. If you have not yet experienced pests in your houseplants, then use this video to equip yourself with information or with knowledge to help prevent it even from happening later on down the track or if you have said, oh, you don't have pests in your house plants, I would recommend that you go ahead and inspect your plants a little bit more carefully and just get up close and personal with them and have a look, make sure you, that you don't actually have pests before being so sure about it. I would love for you to comment below your tips, tricks, and advice for when you yourself have experienced having pests in your plant collection. Everyone will have different experiences when it comes to having pests and different methods and ways of eradicating them or helping manage them, especially since we come from all different parts of the world, depending on your climate, depending on your plant, your area, the weather where you come from, your part of the world, everyone's going to have different experiences with the pests that they experience in their plants. So I would love for you to share your tips and comments with your experience and what you have found is helpful for you because I know that other people will benefit from your experience and what you have found helpful as well. Tip number one is a very, very important, probably number one top of the list. Well, they're all pretty important, but this is the most helpful and preventative measure is to clean your plant leaves regularly. There are several different ways to do this. One way is to spray your foliage down with some neem oil or a dilution of eco oil with water and using a microfiber cloth or a clean cloth to clean off the overside and underside of the leaves. This will not only wipe off any pests that might be there, but it will also clean off the dust, which pests, especially spider mites, seem to be quite more attracted to. Spider mites are attracted to dirty, dusty leaves, and they seem to make themselves quite at home there. But if you're regularly cleaning your leaves, and especially with a solution of eco oil or neem oil, or even peppermint oil, it will deter the spider mites from taking hold and reproducing on your leaves. So wiping them down is one way. The second way, Way I would recommend and I personally do is to regularly shower my plants. Now I have not been showering them every single time that I water now simply because life has just gotten really busy but I do try and remain consistent especially when the leaves are showing up quite dusty. So I'll take my plants into the shower whenever they need a watering and give them a really really good hose down. The oversides of the leaves, the undersides, the stems and just the whole pot of soil when it comes to watering I'll just give it a really good trench. What the water does is several things. Number one, it waters the plant. It knocks off all the dust, it cleans the leaves thoroughly, overside, underside. It's just easier when you're dousing a plant as opposed to wiping each leaf individually. Does that make sense? And number three, showering will also knock off any spider mites, aphids, anything that might be attaching themselves to your foliage. So showering your plants, it, I personally have found to be a really effective pest management strategy. After showering my plants, I also go through with a spray of eco oil. And I've just found this to be a really effective way to manage the pests, clean the leaves, and water my plants thoroughly. So it really hits three birds with one stone. So that is the number one thing I would say is regularly clean your leaves. Okay, so this next tip goes kind of hand in hand with cleaning your leaves regularly, but this is to inspect your plants regularly. So you might not be necessarily go be going through with a cleaning cloth every single time, but just often, of course, we like to admire our plants. We like to just stand and kind of like look at them and stare at them and appreciate their beauty, right? But while you were doing that, just make sure you're getting up a little bit closer and a little bit more personal and inspecting the leaves. 
So this one, for example, this is a Monstera Silt Picana. The other day, I was just looking at it and I was just admiring the foliage. And then I kind of looked down into the foliage and noticed that there was a kind of like little tiny white spots on one of the leaves. And sure enough, there were a couple little spider mites. They weren't even like, there wasn't even that many. It was just a few. And I was able to treat the plant and pop it back in its spot. So this is one of the things that I would really recommend you that you do to get ahead in front of the pests. So for example, if I hadn't inspected it, if I hadn't picked it up and looked at the undersides of the leaves, then it would have for sure just gone ahead and the spider mites would have continued to reproduce and lay their eggs and eventually take over the whole entire plant and eventually destroy it. Not only that, it would have spread to the rest of my plants as well. So that's another thing that I would really truly recommend that you do regularly get up close and personal with your plants and inspect them really, really well. I always say prevention is easier than cure. Don't wait till those spider mites or those thrips or those gnats are well and truly infesting your plant. Get ahead of it, keep one step ahead of them. Prevention is easier than cure, I always say. <laughs> Using the wiping method makes sure that you get up close and personal with your plants and ensures that you notice things that you probably wouldn't notice otherwise if you were just passing by and just like glancing over your plants. Getting up close and personal with them with a cleaning cloth makes sure that you are regularly and thoroughly inspecting your leaves. No matter which method you choose to use when it comes to cleaning your plants will result in a happier and healthier plant that's able to photosynthesize. So photosynthesizing, if you didn't know, is a plant absorbing light and in turn turning it into nutrients and food for the plant. So essentially, light is food. Light is life for your plant, which is why it's a very important part of your plant's life. It needs light. Leaving your plant leaves dirty, having it left unchecked will ultimately lead to unhealthier plants which will then lead to pests down the road because pests are actually attracted to plants that are already struggling that are already unhappy and they're just waiting for the perfect carcass of something to just take over on if you leave your plant leaves dusty spider mites love that they love to thrive on dead dry and dusty foliage so if you're regularly cleaning your leaf then chances are spider mites will not feel at home there and you can just bugger them off <laughs> what a horrible pun <laughs> excuse the pun tip number three is to mix pest preventative additives into your soil you might already buy soil that is ready mixed, ready to go, but then you could go ahead and take the extra step ahead and mix things into it that will help deter pests. So some of these things could be diatomaceous earth or these little things that you can actually find from Bunnings and it's called gnat barrier. These things deter gnats from laying their eggs in the soil. The larvae and the eggs, they will not survive in soil that has these additives in it. The diatomaceous earth for one is very, very fine, but when it comes to the little larvae and the little eggs, it's actually got really sharp edges. So it kind of cuts and it sounds cruel, but it's pests and we don't want them. We're talking about getting rid of them, right? So the diatomaceous earth just is very sharp and the, and the larvae and the eggs cannot live in it. Nat barrier is another one of those things that sometimes I have mixed in with my soil. It's something it's not something I do very often because I use different measures to prevent gnats in my soil, which I'll talk about later on. But gnat barrier has been found to be quite effective in mixing in with the soil as well. So yeah, there are some things that you can mix in with your soil to help prevent gnats or pests from laying their eggs and reproducing in your substrate. Another thing that you could do to help prevent pests from taking hold in your plants, this one is a really, really easy thing to do, is to keep up the humidity if possible. Now, if you are an avid plant collector, then most likely you would have a humidifier. And if you don't, I would really recommend getting one. Humidity is not only really helpful for the healthy growth of your plants, but it also helps deter pests from really making themselves at home among your leaves. Now, keeping up the humidity doesn't really work for all pests, but it will help keep the dry climate loving pests at bay. Example, spider mites. Now I mentioned spider mites a lot because they are a very destructive pest and something that you really wanna keep an eye on and get ahead of 
if you can. So yeah, keeping the humidity up. Regularly fill up your humidifiers, have them going near your plants. For example, the plants that I have in my bathroom, it gets quite warm and stays quite humid in there regularly because not only is that where I shower, but that's also where I water all my plants. And so it keeps up the humidity in that room. I have never actually seen a pest on any of my plants that I keep in the bathroom. I also have a humidifier running near my plants in the bedroom. It tends to get quite hot and quite dry in there. So I always try and ensure that I am keeping the humidifier running for the plants in there, especially the calathea in there. They are quite prone to spider mites because the leaves for one are quite delicate. They go crispy and dry very easily once the humidifier isn't running or if it gets too dry or too hot. So I am trying to make sure that the humidity is kept up for these plants. Now don't get me wrong, having a, the humidity up does not automatically mean that you will not be getting spider mites in your plants. They still can live in a humid area. It just really drops the likelihood that they're going to take over your plants. Having your humidity up helps it doesn't completely eradicate your pests, but it's definitely a really easy measure that you can do to help fight against pests. It, and it's really beneficial for your plants too at the same time. Trim off any dead or dying foliage. Okay, so not only is this tip part of grooming your plant and keeping it aesthetically pleasing, keeping it nice and tidy, but it will also reduce places for these pests to make a home in. Again, spider mites like dead, dying leaves. They like dry, crispy places to, to stay and take a foothold in. So if you're regularly going through your plants and cleaning off any dead and dying foliage, then it will ensure that there is less places for these spider mites or pests to take a foothold in. It also helps keep your plants looking trimmed, groomed, pretty, healthy. Your plants just already look so much better when you, it doesn't have any dying leaves hanging off of it. Isn't that right? Like I feel like it instantly lifts the plant up and makes it look all happy again. The next method, and you may have already seen this tip floating around, but this tip is to use yellow sticky traps in your plants. There is a blue one and there's a yellow one. I'm pretty sure the blue one attracts thrips, I think, and the yellow one attracts spider mites. I'm um, not spider mites. The yellow one attracts gnats. Gnats I've found to be the most, one of the most common house plants that people, house plants, house pet, house plant pests that people will ever have to deal with getting rid of. So I would recommend taking these yellow sticky traps and scattering them among your plants or even in the ones that have the worst infestation of fungus gnats. The yellow sticky traps will catch and trap any adult fungus gnats. And while the sticky trap doesn't exactly have any fight against the larvae or the eggs that the adult gnats have already laid in the soil, they will still catch the adult gnats and prevent them from reproducing in your soil. So you could use this method, the sticky traps, alongside another measure to actually get rid of the existing eggs and larvae in your soil. One of those measures is to do a neem oil or an eco oil soil douse. You could also do a hydrogen peroxide douse through the soil or you could also take the first couple layers of soil off the top of your plant and replace it with fresh fungus gnat free soil. These are some things that you could do to help eradicate the fungus gnats in your collection. The next tip is to let your plant soil dry out between waterings or even at the very least, the top first few layers of soil in your plant, let it completely dry out between waterings. Fungus gnats don't like to be in dry soil. They cannot reproduce in dry soil. Their eggs and larvae cannot live in dry soil. So allowing your soil to dry out will definitely cut the life cycle of any fungus gnats that you might have in your plant. That is why so many people enjoy the bottom watering method for their plants, which is essentially watering your plant from the bottom. So you have a vessel of water, you sit your pot in that vessel of water and the pot itself will soak up just as much water as it needs and then it'll stop. And that's a method of watering that some people like to use to ensure that the top layer of their soil doesn't stay wet and the gnats can't lay their eggs in the soil. I'm totally fine, like anyone can do whatever works for them when it comes to watering their plants. I personally, however, do not use this method of watering because I personally like to do the whole showering thing like I explained before. 
I prefer not to bottom water. I simply just let the soil dry out between waterings. And you know, I have spoken about this before, how I am a cereal underwaterer. So I haven't had to struggle with gnats in my plants for a long time. Sometimes I see them here and there, you know, just buzzing around, but I don't actually see them in huge quantities like I used to before I realized these measures of eradicating fungus gnats. Often I'll see them fly out of the base of a cover pot when I lift a plant out because it's still moist at the bottom from where the soil is still quite damp from the previous watering, but I really don't struggle with fungus gnats anymore like I used to. In fact, I don't actually really struggle with them at all anymore. And this is, I have found to be because I allow the soil of my plants to dry out between waterings, which means they cannot lay their eggs in the soil and have them survive and hatch and start that vicious cycle of fungus gnats flying everywhere. <laughs> the next tip is to inspect your plants thoroughly before buying them. This is probably a really important tip that is probably not talked often about enough. So when you are buying your plant, make sure that you are inspecting it thoroughly. This could mean picking it up from the nursery or wherever you wanna buy it from and check the oversides of the leaves, make sure that they don't show any signs of stress or markings from potential pests that might be in the soil or hiding in the stem somewhere. Check the soil of the plant as well. Give the pot a bit of a squeeze and make sure that there aren't any fungus gnats flying out from the soil as you squeeze the pot and just overall give it a really good inspection. I would also make sure that you are inspecting between the stems and the an, another emerging leaf because sometimes mealy bugs like to hide in those little crevices. So yeah, just make sure that you are thoroughly inspecting your plants before you're purchasing them and bringing them home with you because that is probably one of the number one ways where you can introduce and bring pests into your home when you might not have actually had them before. So just make sure you're inspecting your plants. Hand in hand, along with inspecting new plants is to when you do have a new plant, and even if you've inspected it, just make sure that you're quarantining it or isolating it before integrating it with your existing collection. So while you may have already done the measure of thoroughly inspecting it before you brought it home, you don't know what kind of pests might still be hiding within the plant, especially since the life cycle of a lot of pests are generally between a week and two weeks to three weeks. So even if it might not be presenting itself at the time on the plant, within a week or a couple weeks, any eggs or larvae that may have been in that will probably hatch and present themselves in your plant. So just make sure that you're isolating your plant or putting it aside from your existing collection just in case, just in case. These are, sometimes there are pests that you really don't wanna gamble on and just don't wanna risk having them infect your existing collection, which you would be spending so much time taking care of and you don't wanna ruin it by introducing a new pest into your collection. Something you could also do alongside isolating your plant is to treat it. So this could be washing the leaves down or spraying it down with neem oil, eco oil. Whenever I mention any oils, by the way, in any type of pest treatment, it could be any of these. It could be eco oil, neem oil, peppermint oil, uh, white oil. These are all things that people use in order to help prevent or manage a pest infestation. So yeah, treat your plant. This is something that you need to probably be doing anyway as a management thing to get ahead of it and to repel any pests that might be wanting to look at, you know, laying down roots and making their home and pitching their tent in your plant. Having these preventative measures in place will save you a lot of stress and heartache down the road in getting rid of these pests from your plants. Okay, the next tip might not work for everybody, especially it will not work for me, but if you are able to do this, then do it. Space your plants out, space them apart. Don't have your plant leaves touching. Some people will be able to do this and others won't, but this is just another measure that you can do to help prevent pests from spreading through all your plants. If one plant develops a pest, it is so much easier for this pest to spread and repopulate and reproduce through all your plants if the leaves are touching or if the plants are clumped close together. 
If you're someone that doesn't isolate a new plant before integrating it in with your collection, then maybe spacing them apart is something that you might want to consider doing so that if there is any pests in the new plant that you bought, it gives you a chance to keep ahead of the infestation before it spreads to the rest of your collection. So yeah, spacing your plants apart, have heard it to be effective. I don't do it, I do other things. <laughs> As you can see, all my plants are touching. They're all friendly with each other. <laughs> The last thing I want to talk about, and I have kind of mentioned it before, but this is a tip in itself, is to regularly spray your plant leaves down with a preventative spray, whether that's neem oil, eco oil, coconut oil dilution, peppermint oil dilution, whether it's any of these, just regularly go through and spray your plants with these things. I always spray my plants down with eco oil after I give them a shower. This not only is that preventative measure, or a pest management thing that I do, but it also keeps my leaves shiny. It means that dust doesn't actually settle or stick to the leaves as easily, which just covers so many bases all at once. So neem oil might not be everybody's cup of tea because it actually does have a bit of an odor. I don't actually mind it. It's not super strong for me, especially if you dilute it down like properly in the way that the instructions say you should. It doesn't end up smelling too bad. Personally, I don't think anyway, but some people don't like the scent, so you could use peppermint oil, but neem oil or eco oil actually help in killing the pests. It cuts them off at their life cycle. Whereas peppermint oil or the more natural oils is a little bit more of a repellent rather than a cure. So yeah, regularly spray your plants over. Even if I don't see any pests on the plant, sometimes I'll go over with a spray bottle of eco oil and just spritz things down just because I can. And it's just another little thing that I do to help the plant grow healthier and happier. Now, when it comes to actual killing and eradication of pests on my leaves, whether it's spider mites, thrips, fungus gnats, something that I have found to actually be so super effective is Vitality Plus. This is a spray that doesn't actually have a scent. It doesn't really smell like anything and it's just really easy to use. It's ready mix in the bottle and I just go over and spray my plants down with it. Obviously I isolate the plant if I've found a pest on it, spray the plant down with Vitality Plus and within a couple weeks, the plant doesn't seem to be showing any signs of life when it comes to the pest. The plant's still alive, but <laughs> signs of life when it comes to the pests. I've had a couple friends of mine tell me that Vitality Plus, they've found it to be really super effective in the eradication of thrips, which I've heard to be really super destructive on plants left unchecked. So yeah, Vitality Plus is my go-to pest spray solution when it comes to the more bigger outbreaks, which thankfully has not happened too often in my case, thank goodness. And I think it is all attributed to the combined things that I do to help prevent and manage and stay on top of a pest outbreak in my plants. If you guys wanna check out Vitality Plus, I will have it linked in the description box down below. It is something that I personally use and found to be super effective, and I also sell it in my online shop. So if you're within Australia and you wanna try Vitality Plus, definitely go check it out in the link down below. Okay, so that's everything. That's all the pest management tips that I have that I practice with my plant collection. I think it seems to be quite effective and doing quite well because other than a couple fungus gnats that I've seen flying around here and there, I have not had a pest infestation breakout in quite a while. So I'm touching all the wood that that doesn't happen. But if I regularly inspect my plants, keep them clean and do all the practices and the measures that I have talked about in this video, I don't have to touch all the wood. I'm, I'm sure that I'm staying on top of all these pests, taking a foothold in my collection. And they're all looking quite happy, as you can see. They're, I think they're all doing okay. <laughs> especially, which I'm quite thankful for, especially considering that I have quite neglected them in the past month or so. Anyway. That's another story for another day. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it helpful and informational. Again, please do leave your comments in the comment section down below on what you have found helpful to eradicate or manage pests in your plant collection. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like it if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.
back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking, what was that? What was that? <laughs> but it's definitely a really as easy, but it's definitely a really a <laughs> the top few inches or centimeters, depending on where you are. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the top few, <laughs> the top first few layers, which means you have your plant in a, which, which is, which is watering, which is, I prefer not to bottom water. <laughs> because that is probably one of the number ways, number one ways, because that is probably, probably, I've had a couple friends of mine tell me that this vitality, I've had a couple, <laughs> because other than a couple fangus, fangus, fangus gnats, I'm confident, I, well, not, shouldn't be too confident, because, <laughs> 